Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and I'm back today with another haul video. Uh, before I get started, I will say I'm a little under the weather right now. I have been for the last couple days, and I have tea to help me out. Um, I find that it's really, I don't know, appealing the last few days, but I have my restaurant wear, my vintage restaurant wear from 1955, I think it is, and I have some peppermint tea in here. I'm not sure what's going on, but it feels like a very mild case of strep throat, basically. Um, it's kind of like in the upper back throat. Um, no real pain to talk or anything like that. Um, and then I just kind of, I, I feel like I should just lay down or, or mosey around, but I have most if most of my energy, so I, I don't know. Ooh, speaking of tea, and I will get started with this haul video and I'll explain what it's about. Um, I wonder if anybody, this is like baffling me, it's kind of one of those armchair moments here, uh, armchair thought. When it comes to creamers like this, how do you serve with it and deal with it after you're done? So you'd fill it up with milk or like half and half, but when you're done with your little tea time, do you put this in the refrigerator as it is? Do you put like a cover over it? Do you throw it out? Do you pour it back into the rest of the milk or uh, half and half? I don't think it's very practical, but maybe I'm missing a step. And if you're meant to like put it back in the refrigerator, why don't these come with lids like the sugar does? You know, well, why does this have a lid? Why do sugars have lids and the creamers don't? Like that's about the same amount of volume. And I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> These are the types of things that keep me up at night. <laughs> um, so here's what the haul is gonna be. I recently have been pulling things from my booth, one of my booths, and then I also went to a flea market. And I didn't get as much, of, uh, as much things from the flea market. This is one of them, this really cool picture here, painting. But um, I did pull some things from my booth that I would rather just sell online. And um, yeah, I'm sort of re uh, contemplating what I'm doing with the booth. And this is like the slowest time of year for, for the booths. And I'm just seeing less and less of my fruits paying off uh, of, the, of the booths. Um, so I've been trying to think about how I want to deal with the, them going forward. I'm about 90% sure I'm going to cut down to two booths instead of the three and focus more on packing the booths I have, the two remaining booths, packing them more and then doing sales like all the time so that it gets people to stop and spend more time in the booths. And that sort of makes sense because there's gonna be a lot more in each booth. But uh, I was comparing my myself to another vendor there who had um, about four, 450, 100, 450 items, like physical items in their booth. And they had the same size booth as I did. And my booth was coming up around 250, maybe a little less than that. As it was counting like um, all of the uh, salt and peppers and like in the other booth, I know that was I was comparing myself to in their numbers, they had a lot of larger things too. Not so many smaller things like I do, even the ornaments that I hang on the wall. So I'm just wondering, huh, I might not be using my space to the best of my ability, really. So uh, I'm thinking about how I can best utilize the space and the amount of money that I'm paying each month and, and making it more worthwhile all around. So that's kind of leading me also to pulling things from the booth that I think had their shot and maybe I haven't tried them online yet and I think that they might do better online. Um, so we're going to jump in with that right now. Ooh, it's hot. Oh. So the first thing up is actually, so the first thing up is actually this, uh, glass set right here. And I bought the glasses separately from the stand. It was one of those things where I had the stand and I thought it worked really well together. And there is a cobweb on that or dust or whatever. It's been sitting in the booth for too long. So I had it priced for $45 uh, as it is. And it's really cool. I'll show you the glass up close so you can see, so you can see like all of the designs and it's very geometric. So it's really adaptable to a vintage kitchen. It's not like floral. We find a lot of floral things uh, when we're out, but this is very geometric and very 
50s looking with the colors and it, so yeah if you have a white kitchen a red kitchen or a black it works so um it's a shame that i couldn't sell it in person because it's obviously easier to sell something that bulky and heavy and delicate in person rather than online but i'm going to slap that up on etsy for about 60 dollars with shipping included about uh the shipping is going to be somewhere around 15 or 20 dollars of that so um yeah i should if it sells for that amount then that will be really great and i'll get what i was expecting to get from the booth the booth takes about 10 percent of the uh, cut and whereas etsy it's about eight percent or so if you average out their their fees and uh, the payment processing fees and listing and all that so it's a little bit cheaper it's better it's definitely better than selling on ebay if you're gonna go like just based on money ebay would be I believe last time i checked it was somewhere almost at 15 percent so yeah okay the next thing that i got this is actually from the flea market it was two dollars it's a little bluebird of happiness blue glass paperweight I do really well with these and apparently a uh, subscriber let me know this. I think they're done making these. Up until very recently, they were making these things still. And you can look on the bottom of them and see when they were made. This one happens to be 1998. Although I've seen them, I have found these as far back as, I believe like 77. That's as far back as I've ever been able to find these. So that's that one. Um, oh, so I went to the flea market in a previous video, not the last one that we just came back from, and I passed on this glass because there was a three for a dollar sale, and I couldn't find any other glasses. It was just this one. Not that I wanted any more of this type, but I was looking for even any others that I could sell that were different. It doesn't have to be the same. And the whole idea is I collect these random glasses like this because I like all the different styles like this one's this pink and white floral flowers with the green screen printed on and I collect all different patterns of these and I have them in my window but um I couldn't find any other you know to complete the three um so I asked and he said just take it so I took one there was nothing wrong with that so I took it I thought that was really fun. You know, for for somebody like them, they they look at it as it was just one off. You know, it's not a set. It's just in our way, basically. So it, it works out well for me. Um, here we have a nice little covered pair. I love this, and I thought it would sell on the booth, but it didn't. And it's I've I've I feel like it's going to do way better online. So it's this covered pair, uh, uh, sh uh, sugar sugar dish. It's made. It says. Carlton Ware, England on the bottom. And I just, I think it's really pretty. You can see the, the nice colors fading into each other. It has a slot for a spoon. No chips or cracks, very, very cute. I'm gonna sell it as is without the spoon. And we're gonna try somewhere around the 18 to $20 price with shipping included on that pair. Well, but the glass, like I said, this one here, that's for me. I'm keeping that one, it's just a glass. I did pull this one from the booth too. It's a bone china made in Taiwan. Uh, what do you call those with the orange? Is it calico or I forgot what, the, I don't know. It's the orange, is it a tabby or, I feel like there's a different name. But the, anyway, it's really cute. It reminds me of Otagiri with the way that the eyes are. Sort of just, just the style and color kind of. Um, it, it just says bone china made in Taiwan on a gold, foil sticker but it's in great shape no chips or cracks and i will put that up for about 18 to 20 dollars with shipping included i also got this really cute little uh, dog so i'm not sure what kind it is it reminds me of a cocker spaniel but that's sort of my default dog answer if i see a dog with long ears like this sort of droopy looking i just love the facial expressions with the eyes they're so cute and oh that's just a nice one it is marked on the bottom japan so it's from the 50s very cute i will stick that up for about 18 to 20 dollars with shipping included in my etsy shop time for some more tea I don't like how tea is either really hot or like starting to get lukewarm. What is up with that? 
This holds its heat. I just don't understand. Like it was almost too hot at first. Now it's like, I mean, it's, it's still hot, but it's like not, I don't know. Okay. Next thing up is this really fun PY Japan anthropomorphic lemon sugar dish. I'll show you that up close. It's super cute. Look at that face. Oh, there are a few little, um, they're, they're more than flea bites, they're chips. But with a little color correcting, also known as watercolor and nail polish, you could disguise those chips right around, right along his hat there, hat line. And there is some on the back. Other than that, it's really cute. I expect to sell this for somewhere around $24 to $26 with shipping included on Etsy. I was trying, I took all my price tags off. I was trying for about, oh, I lost it, about $10 in the booth. And it just wasn't happening. That's unfortunate. I thought it was a great deal. Oh, by the way, I had one of these that I sold on Etsy. It was a cookie jar, a larger cookie jar, and it sold pretty much instantly um, for around 50 or $60 with shipping included. So yeah, th I think that'll do really well on Etsy. This is another thing that I, again, I just think it's so cool. It is plastic, but it is super kitschy. So we've got a pineapple and an orange and a banana and other little fruits. These are, this is a salt shaker. One of them is salt, one of them is pepper. They come out and then also I'll put, so that's what that is. And then this opens up for, I believe, sugar. So I just thought that was really cool. And then there is a gold foil sticker that I cannot read anymore. Maybe if I gave it some time, I could read it. But yeah, that is so cute. Um, I'm gonna put that online for about 20, give or take $20 with shipping included. It's very cool. I've never seen anything quite like it. So this here is a little wheelbarrow. Um, it's made in occupied Japan, which is very helpful in the, the dating of it. I always get my numbers mixed up because um, we occupied Japan from 1945 to 1952, but the dating, I believe, is from 1947. It, it's right around there. So I think it's the, the common consensus is that it's like a year or two after we started occupying Japan that things were, were, were marked that. So that's why... I'm only mentioning this because somebody was questioning why I said the dates that I did in another video and it's, it's around there. Yeah, it's really pretty. There it is with the little rose on the side of it. And then I'll flip it around, a little flower there. And then it does say, made in occupied Japan. I like that. So I did buy, and I'm going to say, we're almost there to that really cool one. I bought this Culver ice bucket. Um, it's heavy. It's bulky. Why did I buy it? I don't know. It's one of those things. It's really, it's really cute. Christmas is over, but it's Culver. And I guess that's really why I bought it. Um, ice buckets don't generally sell that well. People are doing less and less entertaining, but this is a really nice bowl for other things. You could do um, like any Christmas ornaments or whatever. There's lots of things you could do with this decoration, like for different things. But um, I looked this guy up here and it sells for about $15 plus shipping. So um, that's what I'll do. And I'm not sure on the, the, it's pretty heavy. It has a nice thick bottom to it. And it's, it's gonna take a minute to ship that. But yeah, it's. I think I did pretty well. And I might list it right away rather than wait later in the year uh, just because people are shopping all the time. So this item here, how are we doing? Okay, we're doing good on time. This item here is super fun. Black velvet painted and it has, it does have some minor issues, but that's okay. So I think for right now, for the time being, I think I'm gonna hold off on listing it because I just wanna sit back, think about it, um, enjoy it for myself, and then I will probably list it, knowing me, 
Um, but there's so many cool things about this that I like. I like the 1920s. First of all, it's from the 1920s. So that's the era that it was made in. But then beside that, the scene itself is very 20s inspired with just the way that it is. Like it just has that feel. Um, it has a really neat circular oval picture frame, which is very unique for these. If you ever look them up, if you search uh, black velvet painting, 1920s, you'll find others that are more rectangular, but not so much circular. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's plaster on wood, but I haven't double checked that. There's like a minor crack right there through the, I'm thinking that it's painted gesso. So yeah, that's, that's generally what they did to save on cost. So there's two ways that I know that you could do something like this. It's either carve the wood this intricately, which is very expensive and very time consuming, or um, mold all of this intricacy in plaster and then apply it to just like a flat wood base like they did here. And you could tell from the side of the, uh, the picture here where the two, where they connect, where you go from one, uh, where you go from the ornamental side of things to just a flat wood side of things. And in the back is this nicely constructed octagonal. I haven't counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and it's mounted on this backer board. So yeah, it's very cool. It has, looks like it has the original hanger wire. Ooh. Yes, it's very nice. Only some minor issues. I'll show you that up close. In the light, in the light, you can more so see where there are some issues right through here. And I did Elmer's glue that picture down, like this picture here on the wall. There was a flap of felt, a flap of velvet that I wanted to go ahead and glue back down. And so I did that in a couple spots and then I went through and I trimmed all of the loose fibers. So in an area where the light's not directly hitting this or coming at it from a weird angle, I think it'll be really, um, I don't think you'll be able to notice. So that is probably one of my most exciting things that I got lately. But with that, I am gonna wrap, I'm getting like hot now at tea. <sighs> I'm starting to feel even worse. <laughs> like I need to just go like lay down or something and just veg out. But with that, I am gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.